Tough as Nails is a reality competition series that pits everyday people with working class jobs against one another. The show currently in its fifth season is airing brand new episodes on Fridays and Sundays right here on CBS. CBS. So with me now is uh, via Zoom is host and showrunner Phil Kogan. Phil, so good to see you again. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm uh, excited about talking about Tough as Nails season five. I don't know how it happened. It seems <laughs> like we were just doing season one and then all of a sudden we're doing season five. I would say the most competitive season that we've ever had. And the first four seasons were in Los Angeles. This one is in Ontario, Canada, a place known as the Hammer or Steel Town. <laughs> Yes. And so with that, I wanted to ask, so um, in addition to filming the season in Canada, you also added Canadian contestants. So how did that decision come about and how did it make the season different? Basically, just tremendous you know, pressure from Canadians uh, who made terrible threats um, <laughs> and uh, there was going to drive me to drink. And I decided, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe better to just let Canadians compete rather than, you know, being uh, spiraling into some crazy, uh, you know, I just didn't like the stress. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, Canadians, you can apply. And all of a sudden, we had an extra 30 million people applying. And um, the great thing about that is it, it increased the, uh, the it, it increased the, the I guess, the, the competitiveness of the people applying and the skills. Suddenly, it wasn't just the best of the best from America. It was the best of the best from, from North America. Mm. You know, and Canadians are tough. So we've got four <laughs> of them on the cast. Um, and right from the beginning, you know, a little bit of banter back and forth about being a Canadian, being an American, a little bit of that, you know, patriotism really kicked in. But uh, it's added a little, ex certainly added a little extra spice to it. I've got, I, there's some fans that are like, oh my goodness, could you stop talking about being Canadian? Because <laughs> some, some people are like, these Canadians are definitely they're they're here to make their presence known. Yes, yes. Well, I personally like the addition to them on the cast, but um, Phil, I'm also curious. So this show format is set up to where people do get eliminated, but no one technically goes home until the very end, as there are both individual and team components to the overall competition. So why is that, and why was that important to you all when creating this show? Well, as you will well know, as a reality fan, you spend so much time casting people to be on reality shows. Yeah. Months, sometimes years, you'll be looking for people. Sometimes you'll have people that you maybe identified two years ago, and then for whatever reason, they don't make the mix, and then you eventually take them on the show because they do fit into the mix of people. And you spend so much time getting them there, and the idea that maybe they come on for just one or two episodes, mm -hmm. and you have to kind of jam their story into the front part of a season because you know they're going. And so you wanting to tell the stories because they're phenomenal stories and they're great characters that you you're in a rush to now get their story out. It puts a lot of pressure on us as storytellers. And because they're such great characters, it would be great if you could get to know them over a whole season, which is what we get to do on Tough as Nails. So we have two mutually exclusive competitions, an individual where people are competing for the Tough as Nails title, and then a team competition. So if someone punches out early in the individual, we don't have to worry about getting their story out early because they're going home. We have the whole season to arc all the character stories through all 12 characters over all 10 episodes and, and, and parcel out aspects of their story through a whole season rather than, oh, we got to get that story in here because they're going home in episode one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, with the punching out, so that's another fascinating piece to me about this show. So um, th that's how people get eliminated is through these overtime challenges at the end of each episode, where essentially the way I would phrase it is like two um, of the players are dueling out against each other in one final um, kind of stretch yes. to stay in the game. So what do you feel like this really pulls out of the players and what do you think it adds to the show overall? Well, I think that's very perceptive of you. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically a battle back, right? It's you're taking the 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 two uh, the two people who are at the bottom, the two uh, people that maybe are the weakest in that particular challenge, and you're saying, okay, you two are the weakest in this, but you have a chance to fight your way back into the competition. You're going to go head to head and give it your best in this overtime challenge. We call it overtime because it's something that these two people have to do that everybody nobody else has to do, and they have a chance to fight their way back in. Mm -hmm. And we have had people who have gone into overtime 
and gone on to win the Tough as Nails title. It's happened before. So, you know, George, who won last season, season four, he had gone into overtime and then ended up becoming our Tough as Nails champion. So it's just a, a, a great way of giving people a second chance where it's really on the line. Now also, so the cast this season feels very special to me as a viewer, and I love the continuous support that we're seeing each of them have for each other. So what do you think of the cast this season and how do you think it's different than seasons past? Well, there, there maybe is a little, there's a few more sparks. I mean, I'm gonna say that this is the most competitive season we've ever had. Um, throwing the Canadians in there is a different dynamic, the different cultural dynamic there. One of the things that we really pride ourselves on with Tough as Nails is we don't leave things unresolved. Where there is conflict, we really do try to have things resolved so that they walk away at the end of the day with mutual respect for each other. They don't always agree with each other, but we we don't like to leave things sort of un, you know, unresolved. We like things to get resolved. Mm -hmm. And one of the great aspects of Tough as Nails is what we call drive time, where when the teams are driving to and from a job site, a real job site, because we don't build sets for Tough as Nails, we go to real jobs, real job sites, <laughs> is I love that discussion that's taking place in the van to and from the job site. It gets real there. You know, people will have real conversations and there's real conflict there. And I'm pleased to say there's, uh, you know, they they resolve those those issues that they have with each other. Yeah. So I love that aspect of the show. We try to keep it real. We're trying not to be preachy. We don't want to be, you know, trying to say all the politically correct things. Sure. But real world issues do come up in conversations there about racism, sexism, ageism, um, what it's, you know, what it's been like for them in, in their life. Whatever that is, it gets real there. And we, we love capturing those conversations. Yeah, absolutely. This season, we're seeing a lot of talk about addiction, which I think is really important. Now, my final question for you, Phil, um, in the upcoming episode this Friday, we see um, the season three winner return for a guest appearance. So what yeah. was that like? Well, I love Leah. Uh, and, and, you know, Leah really epitomizes what we've been trying to do with Tough as Nails is redefining what it means to be tough. Leah is maybe 120 pounds, maybe five foot four, <laughs> 54 years old. She beat out people who were half her age when she won season three. She's a Jill of all trades. She's done every single job. You could name, literally name door-to-door -door salesperson. She's been a farmer with llamas. She's served in the military. She, she's got her heavy duty license to back up trucks. She can do anything. There's nothing Leah can't do. Yeah. And so to have her come back um, as, a, as a champion, we had a bit of fun. We had her wearing a wig. People <laughs> recognized their voice. They weren't quite sure that it was her. And then she pulls the wig off in the show and reveals itself. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a fun moment, but yeah, it's awesome. There's a, there's a legacy that we have on Tough as Nails. She's a part of that legacy. People who come on Tough as Nails, they bond. All the, the, the different contestants from the various seasons, they bond. They all know Leah. They all love Leah. And so to have her back was a real honor. Yeah, absolutely. And the legacy continues to build. So new, brand new episodes on Fridays and Sundays right now on CBS or Paramount Plus of season five of Tough as Nails. Phil, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to talk. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's a little different us being on Friday nights and Sunday nights because normally we're once a week. But, you know, everybody gets to kind of mini binge <laughs> this season of Tough as Nails because it's on twice a week. Absolutely. Exactly. All right, Phil. Thank you so much. Thank you.